And welcome aboard everyone. Steve Malsberg with you and joining me now is Dr. Jane Orient. She's executive director of the Association of American Physicians and Surgeons. She's also a Heartland Institute expert and author of Your Doctor Is Not In, Healthy Skepticism About National Health Care. Welcome back, Doctor. Good to talk to you. Always great to be with you, Steve. All right, let me, let me ask you uh, this. The president uh, th today at lunch with the Republican senators really read them the riot act and said, you know, you've had seven years uh, and you knew that in those seven years you could put any bill together you wanted to send it to Obama and he would veto it. He said, I got a pen. I'm ready. Uh, and he said, nobody should leave here until we have a health care bill. Now, I know that that's not something that would make you really that happy if they did pass a health care bill, correct? Well, some of the ones they've proposed have been really pathetic. But I'd love to see a bill, the same one they passed in 2015, to repeal Obamacare. And then, after we find out what's in it, they can decide whether there are some things that maybe we should put back in and have it enacted by a majority of the Congress instead of with some backroom deal. So you're saying that, um, th that you know, since they couldn't come to a consensus, I mean, that might be a good thing on the bills that we've heard about. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but you, but you believe that McConnell's plan to repeal, which I believe there will be a vote next week, even though apparently he doesn't have the votes to, to make it happen, uh, you believe re repeal without replacement is better than just leaving things as is for, as they say, two years for it to fail, or what? Well, I think repeal is very good because you get rid of the taxes, you get rid of the onerous hundreds of thousands of pages of regulations, you make it possible to offer true insurance again, you get rid of punishing people for refusing to buy an overpriced product that is is worse than useless for them. All of these things we could get rid of. And I think McConnell should bring it up for a vote and make the Republicans vote no. Let their constituents see that they were just pretending all this time. Yeah. All right. So so let's talk about your, your vision. I mean, you want to get the government, and, and many people do, out uh, of health care, and I'm with you. But what happens if they do repeal, and, and these, some of these things you mentioned go away, uh, what about the, the criticism or the, the predictions, the dire predictions that unless there's a replace immediately or, or even in the near future, it's going to just wreak chaos on the insurance industry and, and, and the health care system? Well, I think that the insurance industry is pretty chaotic right now as far as the individual market is concerned. Uh, basically, people, they're, they're withdrawing from the market because they can't make a profit under the very restrictive Obamacare regulations. The, the companies that are doing well, though, are the Medicaid managed care companies, and they've got this this wonderful endless flow of, of funds from the federal taxpayers to keep them alive while they pretend to provide some medical care or to pay for some medical care for some some people. You know, maybe 20 to 40 cents of everything that they get, they actually spend to take care of somebody. So, you know, I, I almost can't remember back. I mean, I do, I, I do remember, but, you know, before we had Obamacare, uh, can we go back to that? And would that be desirable? Or would that situation as it presented itself pre-Obamacare need, pardon the expression, doctoring? Well, the, before Obamacare, we had a, a very uh, dysfunctional system. And what Obamacare did was just rigidify the worst parts of that system and outlaw the better parts of it. We write about this in our, our white paper that's on aapsonline.org. But the, the basic problem is that we have uh, we have insurance that's comprehensive, that's supposed to pay for everything and make your medical decisions for you. Instead of true insurance like your car or homeowner's insurance that only pays you money if you have a catastrophic loss. It does not tell you what kind of care to get, what doctor you can go to, uh, whether to get care or not. And, and it does not, you don't expect it to pay for most things. You hope never to have to file a claim with your car insurance company. Um, if, if they do repeal and don't replace, um, what happens to, to all the people who have Obamacare? I mean, I, I, you know, I don't think they'd be off on the day the bill is signed, but uh, what, what happens to the market? Can the insurance market 
I mean, what would the average, what, how would it affect the average person who might have an Obama policy, um, you know, Obamacare policy? Now, what would they do? Well, keep in mind that the people who have an Obamacare policy may have already lost their insurance three or four times because of the companies withdrawing, because of changes of this or that. And I think insurance companies might have to scramble to uh, come up with some products that people are actually willing to buy and that are actually affordable. And being uninsured is not the end of the world. Insurance is not the same thing as medical care. I've been uninsured for about five or six years now or maybe longer because it, you really stopped being able to buy true catastrophic insurance quite a while ago. All right, so you've been uninsured. So, so I mean, if someone, if you need a doctor or you need a medical procedure, now, that's not catastrophic. Um, so what, would you pay out of pocket? Is that what you chose to do? I call them up and say, I'm uninsured. I would like to have an appointment. This is what I need. How much will it cost? Interesting. And, and instead of paying $10,000 or even more to an insurance company that goes right down the drain, you know, it's at the end of the year, if I didn't use it, well, it's gone. I have that $10,000. And I pay the doctor, and the fees are generally quite reasonable. In fact, you may find out that if you pre pretend not to have insurance, the cost of your prescriptions or the cost of your MRI or CT scan will actually sound pretty affordable when you compare it with the cost of your monthly insurance premium. Now, you say pretend. Is that, I mean, I, I, don't, wanna, I don't want you to inadvertently advocate something that's not on the up and up or legal. So, I mean, can you do that? Can you pretend you don't have insurance when you call a doctor? Well, or why not? You're, you 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 have a benefit. You are not obligated to use that benefit. True, true, true. I mean, I picked up a prescription the other day, and uh, it was just too much of a hassle to go through the insurance. It came to ten bucks, so I said, "Don't even put it through." I didn't do anything illegal. You're you're absolutely right, doctor. It's always great to talk to you. I love your your perspective, and uh, we will speak again soon as this saga continues, no doubt. Thank you. Dr. Jane Orient, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, uh, I want you to stay connected. We're going to put up on the screen right now all the great places you could watch Newsmax TV. Go to NewsmaxTV.com, and uh, it will tell you there what I'm going to tell you. Direct TV, Channel 349, AT&T, UVerse, Channel 1220, Verizon Fios, Channel 615. And, of course, always stay connected at the website, Newsmax.com.